Hi, I'm Peter Bois, and I'm going to show you how to make one of these, an Arduino-powered remote control for your Telodrome. This project is something I'm actually going to be using in my live show, Engineering Wonder, my STEM-infused magic show. During my show, I have this drone take off and fly around and do a couple tricks in the beginning and at the end of the show. It's a very important part of the show. The whole show revolves around learning the uh, electronics, the technology that makes this drone work. And uh, I was having some troubles with it. How a Tello drone works is when you turn it on, it starts broadcasting a Wi-Fi network. And then you have to join its Wi-Fi network with your cell phone or an iPad or a computer. And then you can send commands uh, to the drone to do things you want like go up higher, go down lower. I was having it connect to my computer and then I had this program send the commands over. I was performing this at a middle school and I noticed this school had a ton of Wi-Fi networks nearby. My computer is picking up a super long list. And so when I turn the drone on, normally it connects automatically because it's a known network, but it just didn't connect for some reason that day. And I had no way of knowing if it was connected or not before I started the bit I was using it because my computer was backstage. That was very frustrating to me, first of all. And I needed to develop a solution to control the drone from stage. I also needed an indicator so I would know from stage very easily at a glance whether or not whatever was sending the commands was connected to the Telos Wi-Fi network. And so this is what I came up with. Let's get into the build. I like to start each project out with a drawing. So I have a target to aim for, and this is my Arduino controlled drone. I'm going to be using an Arduino Uno R4. It has Wi-Fi on board and this Tello drone made by DJI. The box needs to hold the Arduino Uno plus a shield I'm going to put on top of it that will hold all the buttons. We're gonna need two LED lights as indicator lights to know when it's connected to Wi-Fi. Here's a list of all the things I need the buttons to do. I need 14 of them. First, we need to breadboard everything out uh, to make sure the idea works. First set out all the buttons you need on your breadboard. You're going to need 14 of them for this build. On each side of the button there are two connectors. Connect one on each side to ground and then the other connector gets connected to a pin on the Arduino. And then we're going to put our LED lights on the board. The short pin on the LED goes to ground and the long pin goes to positive. Then put your resistors on the positive. I'm using a 220 ohm resistor to protect my LEDs. And then connect the positive pins of the LEDs to a pin on the Arduino. Here is all the code I wrote for this project. I'm going to go through it step by step with you. First, you need to include your Wi-Fi library, then define the IP address of the Tello drone. We're going to define our variables for the LED lights and all the buttons. These variables are the pins the buttons are connected to on the Arduino. Then I declared a boolean, which I'll use as a flag, which I'll explain later. Then we have our pause interval, which is the delay time in between our button presses. Then I made an array of a bunch of different commands I can send the Tello. There are 15 of them here. Then we have our network name and password to connect to the Tello Wi-Fi. Make sure you set a password using the Tello app on your phone and put that in the code here. Declare your UDP port number and then attach your object. Then we need to set all our pin modes, two outputs for the LEDs, and then all of the buttons are gonna use the internal pull-up resistor. So we're gonna pull all of those up. So when you press it, the button, it'll go low. Then turn your yellow light on and your blue light off. That's the end of the setup function. Now we go into the main loop. The program is going to stay in this while loop while it is not connected to the Tello drone. It is gonna to continue to try to connect to the Tello drone every half a second, and it's going to stay in this while loop while it's not connected. Once it becomes connected, it's going to come out of that loop, and then it's going to check our flag, and that is going to be false, and it's going to set up everything we need to set up for our UDP connection, and then it's gonna turn our flag true, so it will not run this loop again unless we become disconnected to Wi-Fi and it turns false. Then the program is going to read the state of each button and store that value into a new variable. If it hasn't been pressed, it's going to stay high because we have the internal pull-up resistors on it. If it is pressed, it's going to go low. Our next statements will be if statements and it's going to compare 
the value of the state of the button and if it is equal to low, if it is pressed, then it's going to execute the code inside of the if statement. Each if statement has the same structure. First, we're going to turn on the yellow LED by pulling that pin high. Then we're gonna start the UDP packet. Then we're gonna write, and whatever you're sending the drone goes in here. In this example, I'm accessing a command from the array I set up. I'm accessing command one. It's not the first command in the array because arrays start on zero, but it's, so it is technically the second one, which is labeled one, which is the takeoff command. You could also send a command by putting whatever you want to send in quotes. In this case, I put up 50, so it's gonna go up 50 centimeters. So you can access commands from an array or write them out directly inside of quotes. You can find all the commands in the Tello SDK manual, which I'll link below. Then you're going to end the packet to tell the UNO that we are done with the UDP send. This is our pause interval to allow the drone time to do whatever command we sent it. And then we're going to pull the yellow LED low and turn it off to let the user know that it is done with the command. I have if statements for all of the button states that I'm reading above. And then also I have functions for the routine buttons. These are the larger buttons that will send a series of timed out commands to the drone to it allow it to do multiple things with one button press. Okay, so I just finished the code on uh, my prototype here and I'm gonna see if it works. So we will plug in the uh, Arduino Uno and this is gonna stay yellow until it connects with the drone. So right now, it's going through a loop searching for the Tello's Wi-Fi network. The Tello is off right now, so I'm going to turn it on, and it's gonna start broadcasting its Wi-Fi network. It turned blue. <laughs> All right, so we should be able to communicate. Uh, so this button is takeoff. Let's see if it works. I don't even remember what this one does. So that goes up 50. Oops. Found it. Still not broken. These are great because they're super easy to put back on. You just... And you're back in business. So we'll take off. And... You can get it to land on your hand. All right, time to start making this look better. We're gonna need a case for it. So I'm gonna design it in Fusion and 3D print it. Uh, I need to put all these buttons on a PCB board and solder everything together. All right, let's get to work. Here is the box I designed in Fusion 360. It's a pretty snug fit. Um, notice it has holes for the USB port and the barrel jack port for power. There are little holes in it for screws to attach your Arduino Uno in, but it's such a tight fit that you probably don't even need those little holes in the bottom. And here is the cover. Notice there are little nubs sticking out the side and there are holes in the side of the box that allow the cover to stay on tight and snug. I went through multiple versions of this, so don't think I got it right with the first shot. I'm just showing you the finished product and it's time to print it up. Notice the slots in the side of the box and the nubs on the cover. When you close it, those little nubs fit inside those slots to hold the lid secure. Here's the schematic of our PCB board that we're designing. It has a ton of buttons and a couple of LEDs and resistors on it. Here is the board I designed. It is a shield, so it's a cutout of the Arduino Uno shape with all the through holes in the exact position for the headers to accept the pins. I used 1206 surface mount resistors. Each resistor should be about 145, 150 ohms. I uploaded the Gerbers and made an order to PCB Way. I've never used PCB Way before. I thought I'd give them a shot. Hey, this isn't sponsored, but I'm open to it, PCB Way. And they came in about a week later or so, and they turned out perfectly. They look fantastic. The first thing we need to do to our PCB is solder in pins. To do this easily, just put 
all the pins into the headers of your Arduino Uno, and then put your shield on top of it and solder all the pins into place. Once all the pins are soldered in, then you can pull it off the Arduino and attach all your buttons to the board and then put your LEDs in. Make sure the long pin goes into the positive and the short pin goes into the negative hole and tape them up so they don't fall off when you turn them over. Then turn everything over and solder everything into place. Then turn the board back over and solder on your resistors. Again, these are 145 ohm resistors. I mislabeled them on my board, but they are correct on the Gerber files I have available for download. Time to see if everything fits. Press it into your Uno, then put it into the box and fit the cover on. Here's the first test in the corner of my basement and it did not work. I did something very, very stupid. I forgot to connect the ground pins on my shield to the ground plane on the shield so the whole shield isn't grounded to the Arduino. I fixed this in the Gerber files so if you use the Gerber files you'll be good to go. I have an easy workaround that fixed my board which I'll show you now. I located the ground pins and then I just added a jumper wire from one of the ground pins to one of the ground pins on a button. This would work on any button and that grounded the entire shield to the Arduino. I wanted all the buttons on the remote to be labeled so I learned how to add different color text into your print in the bamboo slicer. First open your STL file in the bamboo slicer then in the process menu click on objects instead of global click on your stl file to select it then click on the t drop down menu that is the text drop down menu select your font you want to use the size of your text and then click into the input text field and type in the text you want to put there. In this case, I put a one and font size five. You can click anywhere on your object and it'll put that piece of text. Then you can go over to the objects menu and select the color you want for it. I have white and blue loaded up. Then right click on the text and it'll bring up a menu and go down to change type. And then you're gonna change this type to modifier and press okay. And that is going to allow you to push that text into your object. I repeated that process for all of the button labels I wanted on the cover of the box. To have your text be flush with your print, you wanna put an embed depth in this case, I put 1.8 millimeters. The thickness of my lid is two millimeters, so I'm going to have one layer of white on the inside. After you embed all your text, you are going to rotate it so it's face down. That's the way it prints. Slice it and send it to your printer. And mine came out like this. All right, so I'm in the corner of my basement uh, so I can get some space here. <laughs> this is where I work out. And it is time to test my remote on the Tello drone. Right, it is now on. The Arduino is trying to connect to the Tello's Wi-Fi. When it does, looks like I we are connected. All right, we'll press the takeoff button. And it's working. There's not a lot of... The thing about this Tello drone is that these sensors underneath measure the distance uh, from the ground and see things. Uh, they don't work very well uh, under dim lighting. You need really bright light to make it work. So I need to find some more lights to put in here. Got a bright light streaming across the floor where we're at. So let's see if it works. Boom. So we should be connected. Let's take off. Great. Go forward a little bit. There we go. Let's just do a backflip for fun. <laughs> and land her. All right, we have a successful test flight. Mission accomplished. And that is how you make one of these little remotes. Uh, it got me thinking uh, if it can connect to Wi Fi. What else could this do? You could have a remote do a lot of different things and it got me thinking for future projects, so stay tuned for those. Uh, if you make one, make sure you send me a picture on social media or tag me in a post. I would love to see uh, your version of this. And if you ever come to my show, Engineering Wonder, if you ever get a chance to see it, 
Look out for this. You'll see it in the show. This is an actual prop that is going to be going into my show next week for the first time. All right, happy building, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.